purposes of the AP exam, one of the things that you've got to be able to do is construct and differentiate some of these cost curves. For perfect competition, we just refreshed those a moment ago. Remember, the big thing for perfect competition is that your price line is flat. This is really what's going to be different from everything else. Your basic cost curves are not going to look different, but your demand is different, so your marginal revenue is different. And that's really where this can get a little sticky. You've got to remember how this is supposed to look. So, just like with perfect competition, we're going to start with the same axes. Price cost. Always label everything as you go. Don't throw your axes up there and think you're going to do that last because you'll walk away from it and those are easy points for you to bomb. So, you know, always label everything, important intersections, make sure you mark them. So price cost, quantity output. In terms of what's going to be the same, what we want to make average total cost and marginal cost. So you want to put those up here. Remember, average total cost is going to look like that bowl shape. And marginal cost wants to come and intersect that at its lowest point. It's going to look like a little J or a big J. Okay? So you want to make sure you start with that. Now, this is going to be different from perfect competition because of the demand curve. I think I'm reading that bit more sufficiently. Because you have product differentiation, you have sellers producing things that are not exactly the same, which means that they're not going to charge exactly the same price. So what's going to happen is that your demand curve is going to slope downward which is what you've seen most of the time with macro and micro so far. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a demand curve in here. And let's see. Okay. Now, one thing that you'll notice, because of the slope of the demand curve, because he's not flat, there's no way for this curve to be tangent to the lowest point of your ATC. That's why this is an imperfectly competitive market. Because you cannot hit that intersection with that point of tangency. Now demand slopes down. Your marginal revenue curve is also going to slope down. And one of the questions that I've been asked before is why is marginal revenue less than demand? Well, because as you want to sell more and more units, let's go ahead and mark some increments here. As you sell more units, your price is going to decrease. Okay, we're sliding down the price line as we slide up the quantity line. The increments of money that you're going to earn are going to also be Increasing. So as your price drops, your marginal revenue drops. So your marginal revenue curve is going to be below your demand curve. And you want to make sure you draw it like that. Now, just like with perfect competition, when we look at these graphs, we want to be able to pick out at which level this firm is actually going to produce. How do we look at this and determine where the heck is the quantity where this producer is actually going to be? It's exactly the same way that you determined it before. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. I hope you remember that rule. Quantity is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, right here. So in terms of marking this on your graph, the first thing you want to do is drop down to the quantity line. And that's your 
20. Now, how do you figure out the price? The price is not going to be way down here because that doesn't have any relationship to where the demand curve is. To determine price, you keep going straight up, you hit your demand curve, that's the amount that people are actually going to demand. Okay, that's the quantity we can sell, that's the quantity we're producing. That's the corresponding price. That's your equilibrium. That's where you're going to be. Now, how do you determine whether or not this firm is making a profit? Well, it's going to depend on the relationship between your demand curve and your cost curve. If demand increases, then we would expect the price to increase. Remember when we do the industry curves? You have to keep all of these things in mind even when you're just dealing with the firm. But when we do the curves for the market, price, quantity, demand, supply, if demand increases, we'll go ahead and slide them out. And what happens is our quantity increases and our price increases. example that this is the market or rather this is the firm producing let's see let's say gasoline jeans come back into style nobody's worn those for about 25 years I don't think let's say that you know there's there's some really hot ad that they put on during the Super Bowl Super Bowl everybody's like what is Super Bowl ads are cool and there's a run on these jeans Demand goes way up because suddenly they're real popular. Remember that tastes and preferences are one of the things that can make demand jump real fast. So, demand for that brand goes up. Demand for the firm selling them, demand for the product goes up. Demand increases. Oh, look what happened. Marginal revenue is going to be different now. Marginal revenue is going to slide. We're getting a little bit messier. We're going to be producing at a higher level. Now, we're making a profit. So, when the price is above average total cost, you're making an economic profit. When it's below average total cost, you have a loss. It's the same basic principle that we saw when you were dealing with perfect competition. It's just that now your demand curve has a downward slope instead of being flat. Otherwise, all of those same principles are going to apply.